Quick video, bit of an update. In that last video, I might have downplayed the setup of this new motor. I guess I don't mean downplayed. At the time, I didn't know. I mean, who knew? I assumed it was a setting tweak or two, which I guess it was in a way. You may recall the motor was exhibiting some strange behavior when I reversed direction. One way it went fine. The other way it sounded like a UFO. Now don't get me wrong, I couldn't have been more excited about having a CNC router that sounded like a UFO if it weren't for the wonky speed. And by wonky, I mean not the same in both directions. I called it quits for the day, but it kept bugging me. How could a wrong setting result in a different speed in two directions? I mean, after all, the direction signal is just either high or low, and the step pulse train should be exactly the same. At first, I figured it was a wiring problem, but that checked out. Then I started to suspect the other end of this, my breakout board, which also ended up checking out just fine. I got to worrying that it could have been the smooth stepper, but have you ever seen one of those? I wouldn't even know where to start. The weird thing is, as we saw, it worked fine, it still works fine in step mode, meaning if I give it a specific number of turns to execute, it would do so flawlessly in either direction. So something was afoot, perhaps even a miss. Long story short, after a ton of time out here in the garage, after my wife left me and my kids stopped talking to me, I figured it was time to take a break and just step away. I was starting to lose hope. After much struggle, and especially in light of recent developments, I realized the problem was probably me, and that this thing was likely above my pay grade. So I put in a call to the big guns. Hold on, wait. Before I continue, let's talk about that. I don't know how many of you watching here keep up with that blue-haired Canadian fellow, but... And I'm not sure if I'm reading this right. He just announced what I think amounts to a public access industrial machining center. Like the free library, but with more metal. Now, I don't care what all the other YouTube machinists say about him. I think that's quite the bold and impressive move. Commendable, even. You may know that your average Joe usually can't get within a mile of one of those machines without a $500 setup fee. So what he's offering, again, is commendable. I'll be honest, I can't begin to imagine what the logistics of what he's offering will end up looking like, but I'm excited to see the projects a crowdsourced 5-axis machining center will bring. Godspeed, my son. Godspeed. Back to the subject at hand. Let me give you the quick backstory. You see, I had an idea. All started with an idea. An idea that I didn't know how to execute. But about a year or so ago, I exchanged a few emails with a fine fellow named Brian at Newfangled Solutions, the people that make Mach 4. In fact, he follows the little channel here and provided the software I use on this very router. I figured if there's anyone I should ask, it would be him. We got to talking, and after a little head scratching, he suggested this motor here. Not this one, this one. For what I was looking to do, evidently the criteria was both very high holding power and good torque at speed, which, as I came to learn, is a bit of a trade-off. It's usually one or the other. This Lexium drive, hopefully, is a good compromise. In order for it to do what it does, what differentiates this from a run-of-the-mill stepper motor is those huge brains it's got bulging out of the top. When I said it's both a stepper and a servo, check this out. I want to show you something. I'm going to go power this up. Mach 4 is not running. All it'll have is its own power, and in the software, its holding torque is set to about 5%. Once powered up, it's locked, just like you'd expect. Let me try to overpower it. I'm going to force it to lose steps. You watch what it does. Inside that little noggin up there, what I think is going on anyway, is that it knows without any outside help that it's lost steps, and it tries its darndest to recover those. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't mean the brag, but in that last video, you witnessed my exquisite programming skills. That's skills with a Z, mind you. But alas, as it turns out, I might have missed a line or three. So I got the motor, wired it in, did my best to set it up, and, well, you saw what happened. After futzing with it to no avail, I gave Newfangled a call, and they walked me through correcting the drive settings. I'm not usually quick with the compliments, but those are some sharp folks over there. This might sound obvious saying out loud, but for the record, and I know this because I asked, by the way, but for the record, if you buy or bought a mock license, you have access to their tech support. So if you have a problem, don't hesitate to shoot them an email or give them a call. If that sounds like a plug, it is. Totally five-star experience. I can't begin to tell you what the boxes they had me check and uncheck actually do. And I'm not sure it's worth walking through that since it's very specific to how I want this thing to act. But if this somehow becomes a thing, I'd be more than happy to share my settings. 
Spindle speed is currently set at 1000 RPM. Let's give it a try in both directions and see how it works now. Let's try it the other way. What you're about to see now is 3000 RPM. That's about as fast as I've been able to tune it and have it still maintain a decent takeoff and landing. Granted, I'll probably never run this thing at 3000 RPM. Anyway, just an update to let you know it's been sorted. Full steam ahead. And while I wait for materials and parts, I've started screwing around with the encoder feedback. The encoder output is now wired to my smooth stepper motion controller with that nice homemade twisted pair, if I do say so myself. The twisted blue and gray wires you see. I've still got to work out the software side of it, but in theory that lets me monitor and compensate for changes in motor speed potentially allows for my G-code to wait for the spindle to get up to speed before it might come in with the, you know, spinning end mill. And open some doors for constant surface speed machining. All in all, I'm quite excited. That's it for now. Not 100% sure what the purpose of this video was, but there you have it. Thanks for watching.